you're waiting for a big sign, you're going to be competing against the masses of people, which will drive prices up, which will make it harder to, to get that good home that you're looking for. Hey everyone, I hope this video finds you well. If we haven't met yet, my name is Zineb Hamza, but you can call me Z. You're local Vegas realtor with Advantage Realty. Today we're doing something different. We're answering your questions regarding the current high interest rates and whether it's a good idea for you to buy now or to wait. We're talking with Jesse Stockwell, a local loan officer who's going to answer your most common questions. And what is the current state in the lending world? Thank you so much, Jesse, for having us today. Thank you. Thank you. So Jesse, tell us, what did you, why did you choose to become a loan officer the first time? Oh, wow. Well, I never thought I'd become a loan officer, but kind of a lot of different events in my life kind of led me here. Um, I always had a knack for numbers. And in 2008, I graduated. Um, with the real estate and finance major. Oh, wow. And if you can remember, there wasn't much uh, going on in the oh, industry no. at that time. In fact, anything that was going on was kind of had a bad rap. Yes. Um, so I, I started working in loss mitigation as an underwriter uh -huh. for, um, for oh, different amazing. loss mitigation options. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, just trying to find ways to keep people in their homes. So, yeah. um, so when a person defaults or gets behind on their payments, sometimes they'll have options to. Uh, have like a loan forbearance uh -huh. or have their payment reduced loan modification stuff like that exactly yeah. even if i wasn't here but i heard like it was a tough time for people it was yeah. not easy at all it's a very tough time yeah. yeah and i guess from there then i went to uh, secondary marketing which is the the bundling and selling of loans after they've been originated mm -hmm. on the secondary market and then from there i finally um came to what I was doing, what I'm doing right now, which is originating loans myself for people. So the most frequent questions I get from my clients, the first one is, what are rates right now and how might, how might they change in the future? Okay, so that's a, that's a complicated question. So let me start <laughs> with the simple part first. Uh, okay. <laughs> the average rate is going to be around 6% right now. Yes. And um, where is it expected to go in the future? Well, the Federal Reserve says that they're going to do whatever they need to get inflation under control. Uh -huh. And their one tool for doing that is by controlling the federal funds rate, mm -hmm. which they said they're, I believe they're going to raise another 75 basis points in, uh, in wow. a couple weeks. Really? So um, as that relates to mortgage rates, uh, mortgage rates will probably continue to rise. Really? Yeah. You think it will go more higher than the 75 that I want to add or? Well, the, the 75 basis points is on the federal funds rate and that's that's like the the main interest rate. That's not necessarily mortgage rates, uh -huh. but since they're so closely connected, um, if they raise one, usually it'll trickle down into mortgage rates as well. Oh, I see. I see yeah. what you mean. Yeah. Wow. I guess it is what it is. Yeah. I've heard like back in the 80s, like interest rates were like... Yeah, so um, in 81, the, the rates were at the all-time highest. So if we look at what rates are at today, 6%, uh -huh. that seems pretty high. But mostly because just last year, the rates were at historical lows. Oh, yeah. So if we're using a frame of reference of just these past few years, uh -huh. yes, 6% seems very high. Uh -huh. But like you were saying, if we go back to, I believe it was in 81, okay. the average interest rate, I believe, was in like 16.5% or somewhere around there. Oh my God. On the mortgages, not on a credit card. So that's <laughs> that's on a 30 year fixed rate mortgage. That sounded like a credit card. <laughs> right? Yeah. I guess we were spoiled last year or like during yeah. the pandemic. Yeah, it was, it was a good time. Wow, 16, that's unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so my second question to you is, should people looking for homes buy now or wait? So, yeah, I get asked this all the time. So the short answer, I guess, is it's, um, it depends. It depends on that, that person's uh, financial situation, their goals. I agree, um, yeah. What they have saved, what their credit score is mm -hmm. right now, mm -hmm. and just their, their timeline on where they want to be in a certain amount of time. Yeah. So we were talking a little bit about 6% interest rate. Yes. Um, so the silver lining to a perceived high interest rate is that 
people are going to be priced out of the market. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but there are going to be people that are are just waiting for some big green light to obviously say <laughs> now's the time to buy. To buy, yeah. And which which could be something like interest rates going lower again. However, if they wait until that time, mm -hmm. they're going to be with everybody else. Oh yeah. And I'm sure you can attest to this like Oh my when, God. when rates were in the twos, uh -huh. how many offers were, were being put on a, a decently priced home? Me personally, I had a deal that had like, I think 30 offers. 30 offers already before us, so. So yeah, if you're waiting for a big sign, you're going to be competing against the masses of people, which will drive prices up, which will make it harder to, to get that good home that you're looking for. Yeah, definitely, definitely. and. I think a lot of people don't want to to be in that place again. Like, so it's better to buy right now. I think so. What do you think? I'm it, gonna. It could be. It, it could, could be. be. Um, it depends on someone's situation. Really. Got gotcha. you. Yeah. I guess the best thing to do if you're if you're on the fence is probably to get to to contact a, a loan officer, a good one, and see like what they would be qualified for, what their terms would be. Just take into all, take into consideration all the facts okay. and where you're at, and then go from there. I wouldn't, I wouldn't just base it off of where rates are at today because gotcha. that, that's such a small piece of the picture. Basically, don't let the rates stop you from buying. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Or just to you know check the water and see. Yes. Maybe it will be good for you to buy now. Maybe you should wait. So it depends on the situation, as you said. Absolutely. Gotcha. So Jesse, the third question is, what does it mean to buy rates upfront? So buying down your rates or, or using discount points as it's commonly referred to mm -hmm. means that um, you, you get a rate. So based off of your, your FICO, your loan to value, what type of program and debt to income ratio, uh -huh. based off of these factors, you're given, you're given a rate available to you and that's that's sometimes referred to as par rate. That's the rate that you would get without spending any additional money. That rate comes to you at zero cost. Wow. Now, there's a par rate, and if you wanted to buy the rate down, get a lower rate, mm -hmm. um, you should have the option to do that uh, within a, at least a certain amount. Gotcha. Okay, so is it good to buy the rates lower for, to lower, sorry, to lower your monthly payments or not? Um, it could be. It, it really depends from situation to situation. Okay. So I would say if, if someone's planning on, on buying, um, like now when rates are, are subjectively a little bit higher than what they've been. Uh -huh. So if they plan on refinancing down the road, I wouldn't advise them to, to spend a bunch of money buying the rate down. Oh. If they're just going to refinance out of it later, it doesn't make sense. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah it kind of makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, and then there's also uh, your budget to take in, take into Consider account. So yeah. if um, if you wanted to focus just on minimizing your your upfront mm -hmm. expense mm -hmm. for the loan, um, then probably wouldn't buy the rate down. But if you wanted to to really maximize your long term savings and pay less interest over the life of the loan, let's mm -hmm. say you're you're not planning on refinancing, you're in your forever home and mm -hmm. you just want to do it once. Mm -hmm. Then yeah, you probably probably should look into what uh, what options are available to buy the rate down. Gotcha. Yeah. Kind of makes sense. Yeah. So finally, what kind of tips can you give the first time home buyers out there or buyers in general about getting the best loan for their for their needs? Um, if you don't already, if you aren't already watching your credit score, if you don't have a, a credit monitoring app, mm -hmm. um, you should probably get one. And not a lot of people know this, but you're entitled to a, a free credit report every year directly from the credit bureaus. It doesn't cost you anything. Mm -hmm. And if you space them out, if you request a credit report from each of the three bureaus, that means you're getting three free credit reports every year um, directly from the bureaus. Um, so it's, it's really good to know what your credit score is. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, often when I pull credit, sometimes mm -hmm. um, I'm bringing something to, to their awareness that they didn't know about exactly most um, of the time <laughs> yeah so it, it it pays off to get ahead of this and just be aware of it so not only that but 
pre-qualify. Yes. So oh yeah. You want to get pre-qualified way before. Looking at home. Give yourself <laughs> at least a month or two months before you plan on buying, because I, I can't tell you how often that. Um, you know, just a little adjustment needs to be done uh -huh. to be able to give them a much better loan. Let's say we just need to get your FICO up two points and I could give you uh, a quarter point better interest rate. Yeah. That would be worth it, right? Oh yeah. But sometimes this takes uh, a month or sometimes even two months, depending on kind of what, what we're dealing with and mm -hmm. what we're trying to get. Mm -hmm. um, zero balance letters from creditors sometimes the creditors take several weeks. Sometimes yeah. they only uh, mail it snail mail. Uh huh. So in that case, you, you have to be prepared for that. <laughs> yes. And it really does help just to be prepared. Know what uh, what areas need work, if any, mm -hmm. and then just being realistic about what your budget is and what you should be looking for. Uh, I totally agree with you. Thank you so much, Jesse, for your expertise. You're welcome. I appreciate what you offered here today, and my viewers will appreciate you too. So what is the best way for people to get in contact with you? Um, I, could, I could leave you my link in the description. Absolutely. So please guys go to that link to get in touch with Jesse. So thank you so much for watching. If you're looking for your perfect new home, then you're going to love Blue Montreals by Signature Homes. Click here to watch that video and I will see you in your new home.